Hello everyone, welcome back to another Bible study in which we'll be discussing the Marvel series. Today we're going to be focusing on Thor. Ironically enough, you're going to be like, wait, isn't Thor a pagan Norse deity? Well, yes he is, but since a majority of my blood is Dutch and Swedish, I feel quite at home in this. But also understand, the kind of Thor that we were shown in these movies has very little to nothing in common with the Thor that you would read about in the Norse text. On the other hand, he does have a few things in common with another certain religious figure and one that can actually be verified by history. But before we start talking about him, I'd first like to start talking about another certain individual. This is the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 14, verses 12 through 17. The prophet Isaiah is speaking in a addressing of the king of Tyre. Tyre and Sidon are these island coastal regions in the Middle East that Israel had a lot of trade with and had ultimately become corrupt in the 7th century BC. History out of the way. He said, Oh, how you are fallen from heaven, O oh, Lucifer, O oh, son of the morning. So this king's being compared to Satan himself. Lucifer was originally his name, but he was renamed Satan, accuser, Diabolos in Latin, because of what ultimately his rejection of God uh, affected his character, essentially. He said, How you are cut to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit in the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend to the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you will be brought down to Sheol, to the grave, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who look at you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man that made the nations tremble? Who shook kingdoms, who made the earth as a wilderness and destroyed its cities and did not open the house of its prisoners? This is the great Satan that we've been so afraid of? Well, essentially what we're being given a description of here is what made Lucifer into Satan, and it was pride. Pride is a sin that's oftentimes left undefined, which is very dangerous because it's the first and greatest example of Satan's character. And he's not the kind of thing that I want to have traits in common with, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. And what traits are those? Well, pride can be narrowed down essentially into three different themes, and you're going to see a common theme in these themes, but let's start with the first. First is self-deception, a false view of reality. And think about this. If your perception of reality is different from what's actually real, when that catches up with you, it hits hard. Not recommended. The second aspect of pride is self-centeredness, a false set of priorities. And understand as well why that's a bad idea. Finding out that the very reason that you do anything in life is wrong is not an easy thing to grasp, right? But the third and most significant aspect of pride is self-deification. It's a false understanding of who you are. Because understand, God is a title not a name, it's a title referring to someone with authority. We call Yahweh, right? We call the God, God, because he's the highest authority. He's the source of everything good. And if you think, just speaking as someone who struggled with pride themselves, if you think that you found a better standard for right and wrong than the greatest being in existence, and then go so far as to say, not only do I think I'm a better authority than God, and we've all done this, we all do it, I've done it. But we say, you know what, God, you can take your standard of good, and I'm going to take my standard of good, put it on a higher degree than you, and say, you know what, I'm gonna replace my standards with yours. You've got a problem, son. And that's really what's going on here. And notice, in every single one of these things, self, deception, self-centeredness, self-deification. Self is the focus here. It's a heart that's drunk on itself. Now, a good example of this that we saw in the movie Thor is ironically Thor. What did we see in self-deception? Did he know that he was causing a war when he battled the frost giants? No, he just felt insulted by the king. 
He deceived himself into thinking there wouldn't be further consequences. Self-centeredness, did we see that? Well, did Thor consider how his actions affected others? No, he, he could take them all down single-handedly if he wanted to, right? And then lastly, self-deification. Did Thor make himself out to be bigger than the ones in authority over him? Absolutely. Thor, I don't care how heavy your hammer is, you're no Odin. Okay? <laughs> and that's essentially the point. The result was the same as Lucifer's ultimately will be. He adopted an attitude that sought to gain everything through pride, but ultimately lost everything in the end. Talk about a backfire, right? I mean, just like Thor being cast to the earth in the Bifrost and stripped of all of his power. We also saw in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, Jesus describes Satan's fall from heaven. And literally, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. There's a little fun parallel there, but note, what's the alternative then? Well, what example do we have in the Bible that embodies the opposite of pride? Well, we can look, obviously... If you're going to ask a question about the Bible, 98% of the time, if you answer with Jesus, you'll be right. So let's test that. Jesus said in John chapter 15, 12 through 13, This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. Now think about that and ask, is there any self-deception in this? No. Nothing that Jesus asked anyone to do wasn't already made apparent by either his actions, his example, or what was already commanded in the Old Testament, in the Bible, in the prophets. So Jesus wasn't deceiving anybody. He was just basically saying, look, if you want a good example of what God expects from you, look at me. Was that a boast? No, that was perfectly realistic. Secondly, John chapter 5, verse 36, Jesus addressing those who questioned his authority, he said, I have a greater witness than John's, referring to John the Baptist, for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. Do we see any self-centeredness in this? No. He came to this earth focused on who? His own glory? No, the Father's will. Our salvation us, the Father, you. All that he was here to do was to serve others. We see the same in Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Self-centeredness in that? What about the last one? Self-deification. Do we see any of that in Jesus' life? Ironically, no. Even though Jesus was God, he didn't have to prove anything beyond his actions. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God. Remember Satan boasting he'll be greater than God? <laughs> Jesus was equal with God. Who's equal than God but God? Hmm but made himself of no reputation. Interesting. Taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. So he didn't cease to be God, he just adopted human nature. Any more than Thor ceased to be Asgardian. No, he just was inflicted with the vulnerabilities of a human. And being found as in, a, in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now, note all of these things and then just think for a moment. Who did we see in the Thor movie that might be a good example of Jesus' character? Once again, ironically enough, also Thor. Because think about this. When Loki sent the Destroyer, Thor's character had developed to the point where even though, firstly, he left Asgard and laid aside his power and privileges as the God of Thunder, Two, was now capable of dying, even though before this point, even if he was fighting the destroyer, he wasn't. And thirdly, he was willing to lay down his life for the sake of his friends. Now, that sounds like a certain someone else, doesn't it? We're not talking about Thor of Norse mythology anymore now, are we? I challenge you to look in 
any Norse source that would show Thor as this kind of individual. On the other hand, I think what makes this movie as something worthwhile is that we're given a picture of the character of Jesus Christ, and that's what makes Thor a hero. Thank you for your time and listening to the study. If you have any sincere questions about pride or the character of Jesus Christ, please let me know. If you have any sincere questions, those are also welcome as well. If you'd like to encourage the ministry, please do so. But most importantly, if you know someone who's familiar with Thor, a Thor, Marvel Thor fan, but perhaps not as much informed about Jesus as they could be to catch the parallels between the two, Please share this study with them and anyone else you feel would be blessed by it. Remember that Jesus loves you and the kind of heart that he's demonstrated, not one of pride, but one that's totally invested in your benefit.